Once the software is completely initialized, you go to the configuration tab and you turn on the lasers. You'll see here a list of functions available to you for the microscope. These are very powerful. Some of these I want you to use, other of these I need you to stay away from. Do not activate the microscope icon under the configuration tab. Nor do I want you to activate the objective icon. You'll focus on the laser, and when you click on that icon, you see another screen come up that allows you to power up the available lasers. Let's go ahead and apply power to each one of the lasers. You might hear initial fans uh, start up, which cool the lasers because they generate a lot of heat. Notice that the argon laser has a slider bar for application of power. We need to bring the power for the argon laser up to about 20%. And so you bring it to 20%, don't go any further and leave it at that point. The rule of thumb is to use as little power on the lasers as possible as this will prevent photo bleaching which you will see in due course. In addition to the laser tab there is a beam path tab. Again please do not interact with the beam path icon nor do I want you to interact with the stage icon. However, the dyes icon is very important. So if you click on that icon, a new screen comes up that shows you all of the different dyes that are available. We can add to this list of dyes also. So if there's a fluorophore that you're interested in working with, we can add it to this list. But notice that I've selected DAPI, and in this column, I see the excitation wavelengths and the emission wavelengths for this particular fluorophore. To the right, I also have a graph which shows me the excitation curve. This is the amount of light that's required to excite this fluorophore at a given wavelength. And you can see the peak is right here. And then we have an emission curve. And this is the amount of light that's generated by the fluorophore after it's excited. Again, it has a peak. Now we could find that exact peak on this listing of numbers. And so if we scroll up and down here, you'll see 100% excitation takes place at a wavelength of 358. So that is the, the peak excitation wavelength that we want to use to excite DAPI. What about the emission? If we click on emission, again, we can scroll down until we see 100%. We click on that. And now you see that at 461 nanometers, we have full emission from our fluorophore. So that we know the uh, excitation wavelengths and the emission wavelengths for this particular fluorophore. So this is a very useful reference tool to be able to study the different dyes that you might be interested in and what their excitation and emission wavelengths might be. Another useful icon on this configuration screen is the control panel icon. If you click on that, you see a rectangle that comes up with a set of circles in it. These circles correspond to the control panel, which is on the desktop. And you can see that these are set up for different functions. These are fully programmable. And so if you do not like the functions that are in here, you can set up the functions that you'd like to control with the manual control panel, which is on the desktop. Additionally, you can set the sensitivity for these dials. If you find that the dials are too sensitive, you can lower the sensitivity so it'll take you more turns of the dial to activate the function that you're currently using. Therefore, by using the control panel icon, in the software, I can program each one of these functions to a different function if I don't like the way they're set up, and I can reprogram the sensitivity of each one of these knobs.